Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Art. Today we're looking at my first headless guitar, which is MK2020 model, seven string. Very stoked to share this with you because there are very few videos on YouTube uh, with this instrument. It's a very interesting guitar and I am excited to share the ups and downs, uh, you know, my dislikes and likes about it. Um, I just got it delivered yesterday, so it's not gonna be an unboxing and first impressions per se, more of, you know, one day with the guitar. I had uh, some time with it already, as you can imagine. <laughs> So without any further ado, let's open up this gig bag, see what's inside. All right, so uh, before we look at the guitar itself, I uh, just wanna say a few words about the uh, gig bag, which is pretty neat. Uh, it has this compartment uh, where you have, um, I got two Allen keys for the bridge. For some reason, uh, NK did not include the Allen key for neck relief setup. Maybe it's the 2020 trend with Apple ditching their charger, NK uh, dropping their <laughs> Allen keys. But aside from that, it's pretty cool because it has this rubber protection down here in case you drop your case and you know the guitar will stay intact. And on the back side, um, you have a Velcro. If you travel a lot, you can hook it up to your baggage, to your suitcase, whatever, and you can wear it as a backpack. So. For the $500 that I paid for the guitar, <laughs> including a gig bag like that, really, really appreciate that um, little touch from NK. Let's go. Nani? It is looking. Wow. Oh boy. But enough of drooling. <laughs> Let's look at it in more detail, see what it has in store. Um, and I think the first thing I wanna talk about would be the neck or the fin the fretboard, <laughs> the fingerboard, fretboard, whatever. Uh, if you're not blind, if you have a set of eyes or at least one eye, you noticed that it's not a standard fingerboard. It is actually a combo ebony with uh, maple which is something that nk offered on one of their instruments back in the day but then they started including that as an option so i paid 400 uh for the neck to be swapped it should have been a roasted maple i thought i wanted to have this thing here purely because of the aesthetics but also because it makes the guitar so unique and really kind of making it stand out there's so many headless guitars out there. You look at them and you have no idea if it's a Kiesel, if it's, you know, a Sturvesen or anything like that. Here, you see the neck, you're like, oh, that's NK. So pretty cool touch from NK, uh, both in the marketing perspective, because I've seen very few guitars with this kind of setup. So that was pretty cool, especially for those guys who appreciate Maple and Ebony and couldn't, you know, can't decide which one they want to go with. <laughs> so this thing here will get them squared away. So looking really good with these, this pattern. Absolutely love it. So really cool, really cool. Uh, but when talking about Hallows guitars, one of the most important things that people, you know, look for in Hallows guitars uh, would be the ergonomics and Ergonomics wise, I think NK has done a tremendous job. First with the fact that it weights like two kilos or something. Um, I don't know, I really haven't weighted it, uh, but I love the way it feels and sits in your hand, just so light. Um, and the way they have done the cuts around this whole body, is pretty neat as it actually make it look, it makes it look like it's, it's from a computer game. Looks like an ax. I could probably slay someone with this, with this side thing. Uh, they have this armrest and then bevel cuts, which are pretty neat. And then another here as well. And this scene thing just, I think to match with this cut, looking really awesome. It's the same thing on the back side. We have another cut here, belly cut, it's pretty cool. And then a little cut in here which contributes to this overall feel of how light and, um, you know, tiny this guitar is, because it takes a lot of chunkiness from the side. So when you take it in your hand, it just doesn't feel like it's a, a real thing. It feels like it's, you know, it's a, it's a toy, but in a good way, really. So ergonomics, definitely, definitely one of the strongest sides of this instrument. 
another important um, major thing that I want to talk about when it comes to this guitar will be the neck. And there are a few things that stand out. First off, it's the asymmetric nature of it. So I think it was kind of a throwback to Strangberg where they have their symmetric neck, but it's more um, kind of angled. This thing here, it kind of gives you, I'm not sure if I can catch that on camera really. I'm gonna try that, but the way this works is you have the chunkier side where you play your chuck chucks in here and then it keeps the chunky side at the bottom, but then over here, it actually gets thinner, just like Super Wizard Neck from Ibanez. Again, very, very hard to catch that on camera. I'm gonna try my best. You could probably see a little bit of that. And I think kind of the idea behind it is to keep your thumb, you know, following, you know, your playing patterns where you're playing something like riffs in here, and then go to your peewee with your solos in here. It is supposed to keep your finger in place. Um, I didn't notice like too much like difference that a day and night. Um, it's nice. I love the way it sits in my hand. I didn't feel like it's something that's extraordinary, but I think that's the great thing about necks, right? You're not supposed to notice it. If you notice it, the neck is messed up. The ergonomics is not there. So definitely cool thing and definitely a point, like a bragging point when you're uh, drinking beers with your uh, Gitter Nerd fellas. Uh, okay, so neck, awesome. Um, and when it comes to guitars, um, especially in this price range, one of, the, one of the most important things is, um, is the fret work any good? And in here, it is exceptional, and that's all I want to say about it really, but uh, so probably not enough. So these frets, look at that. The guy nailed it. They're rounded, and I've never had frets like this in my life. Uh, although I had expensive guitars and custom-made guitars, and I got this exceptionally well-done job on a guitar for $500. There are no dead spots. There is uh, a bit of relief, which is what it's supposed to be. The guitar came in tune. It was half-step down, which is, I think, something they do to keep the tension off the neck during the shipping process. So, kudos 10K. Exceptional job. Now with ergonomics and neck um, out of the way, I think another important point would be the finish. If it's good, if it has any blemishes, I've heard that some folks with their in case, they call that out, that, you know, they would have a little drop of paint or it wasn't painted consistently. Uh, and I looked really close to find anything uh, to call out um, on here and I couldn't find anything. So really, the finish is exceptional. I love the color um, on the back as well as the front. Here you have this, if it, it actually, if I turn that off, the camera doesn't do any justice to how deep this blue is in real life. Here, it's really very light. In here, like if it was Apple's eye guitar or something like this, this would be called ocean blue. It really looks like deep ocean blue color. Here it's it's not that beautiful, just trust me. So really good color here. And as we switch into this, again, the camera 
just makes it a little bit lighter than it is in real life. It's nice, uh, a bit darker uh, shade to the purple and to the blue. No paint drops, no anything. It is painted 100% spot on. Absolutely love the way this looks. It actually looks the ash on this one. It looks like it's a fish. Love it. Um, and the only couple of things that I noticed really uh, would be this little chip next to the switch which i think was just you know when the guy was tightening the um this in here just scratched it whatever and then on the routing side right here you have little um i don't know how to call those these are not chips this is like some little artifacts of painting which is really something you have to look close um, at to notice those it's not a big not a big deal at all um and i'm nitpicking at this point but also noticed like on the routing where you have like this little pp pee -pee, uh sticking out you see it's not really flat and same here on this one so i'm guessing it's just the way the guy's router is set up so it's not a big deal really uh, and again, you have to look really close to spot those things. And aside from that, this is really it. The guitar is exceptionally well finished. Uh, the final couple things I want to talk about, the bridge. I know in the previous models, they had a different bridge system, which some folks complained about, saying that it didn't hold the tuning that well. Uh, mine, uh, and, I, and they swapped. You probably hear, uh, listen to the feedback. The NK started installing these ones here. I don't know which bridges they are, but they are incredible. Uh, so it, it takes a bit of getting used to if you've never played headless guitars and never tuned a guitar with a headless system. Uh, but it's been holding tune in really well. Like I tuned it yesterday, still in tune, pretty cool. Um, it's just, some of these things are a little bit hard to rotate. And I'm guessing that's just, you know, I might not actually go back to the gym. <laughs> but it gets a little harder to the uh, low strength. So I'm guessing it's just the way it is. And maybe the only thing is one of the screws here that I used to adjust the action came a little loose. So I had to screw that back into place. Um, aside from that, the bridge is, is doing its job and the string holder here which I think is titanium um, is also a good thing so and also what I like about this new model is the fact that the routing for each individual saddle and the bridge is done separately so before that if you look at some of the other guitars it's like this whole chunk of wood is cut out and you can see through at the look at the um, unpainted unfinished wood which I wasn't really a fan of didn't look that aesthetically pleasing this thing here they really nail it again so i'm very very happy with how it's set up how it looks and how it works now to the um bad things which the only thing that sucks on this guitar would be the electronics <laughs> um and the reason for that is so the first of the setup right you have this push push which is not typical it's usually have to pull this thing so it's push push for split coils it's tone, uh, it's three-way switch. It has the standard setup with our proprietary pickups. Um, now the problems with that, the first off, the guitar is really noisy. Um, and I'm not sure if it's the grounding thing. I haven't really gotten into the nitty gritty. I haven't opened the cavity yet. Um, they might be just noisy and I'm not sure if it's good, but you see that the way they're isolated, it's not wax, it's basically like foil and they have foil on the plates there, which I'm not sure from what little I know about pickups, I'm not sure if it's if it's a good engineering idea. So I think the pickups will definitely go anyway. I'll be installing something custom made for this guitar. Uh, but I was just thinking maybe that was the pickups issue because the guitar is pretty noisy. You have to roll the noise gate all the way up to like, you know, 50 or 40. Um, now the next issue came with the tone pot, like, you know, like someone would use it, <laughs> but it doesn't look like it's working. I rolled it back and forth. Uh, it doesn't change the sound at all. So 
I'll probably, you know, have to change that or maybe change the routing, um, the wiring, I mean. And finally, um, and I'm not sure if it's the switch issue or the pickup issue, but when I started playing it, uh, it would, the neck pickup would be turned on. That's okay, no problem. But then at some point it just stopped working. And again, I think maybe it's the lame uh, wiring, which is something that could be fixed with a soldering iron in like five minutes, three out of which the soldering iron would be just warming up. <laughs> so the electronics is the only issue, which is again, if you get a guitar in this price range, the first thing you change <laughs> are the pickups and the electronics, or at least, you know, um, do some wiring, uh, proper wiring on this as well. So it's not a big deal, uh, just something for you guys to look out for. Not sure if you get a better one, uh, or I was just that unlucky, because I have a buddy who got his guitar, guitar pretty well set up. Uh, it sounds awesome. The pickups are actually very high output, so pretty cool for, you know, gen gen and all your all the things you would probably play on this guitar. Um, so that is really it. Um, what I recommended uh, to you definitely, if you're into headless guitars, if you're looking for your next um, your next buy, this is definitely a good candidate, um, you know, for for your collection. That is really it for my review. Hopefully, it was helpful for you to see this guitar again. Not too many reviews that are in depth out there um so very excited about it uh if you're on the fence not sure if you want to pull the trigger on it definitely go for it um it's one of the best guitars i've ever owned not uh it's not going anywhere anytime soon <laughs>